Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. Temples or mosques or churches. I make no distinction between these different abodes of God. They are what faith has made them. They are an answer to man's craving somehow to reach the unseen. Please continue watching to find out more. Enaniya Rikannu translates as How are you in Malayalam, the official language of the islands of Lakshadweep. My name is Arush. The artistic people of Lakshadweep pray to Allah to bless your noble endeavors to save our animal friends. May heaven reward you abundantly. Born Mohandas Karam Chand Gandhi, the man who came to be known as the Great Soul, or Mahatma Gandhi Ji, was an exemplary spiritual practitioner and visionary leader of India. Born in 1869, this passionate servant of humanity first became a lawyer. However, he felt a different calling from within as he discovered a fervent wish to improve the lives of all people. The beloved Mahatma Gandhi ji sometimes spoke about desired changes in government. However, he would meditate and fast to encourage a non-violent and beneficial outcome. He thus became an example of peaceful change for an entire country. In his book, All Men Are Brothers, Mahatma Gandhi ji humbly reflects on his own life and inner realizations as a way to illustrate the unity of our global spiritual family. In one passage, he describes faith as a divine principle within us all, regardless of religion. It is faith that steers us through stormy seas, faith that moves mountains, and faith that jumps across the ocean. That faith is nothing but a living, wide-awake consciousness of God within. He who has achieved that faith wants nothing. Bodily diseased, he is spiritually healthy. Physically poor, he rolls in spiritual riches. Now we would like to share with you Mahatma Gandhi's eloquent thoughts from the book, All Men Are Brothers. Chapter 2 Religion and Truth Religions are different roads converging to the same point. What does it matter that we take different roads so long as we reach the same goal? In reality, there are as many religions as there are individuals. If a man reaches the heart of his own religion, he has reached the heart of the others too. So long as there are different religions, every one of them may need some distinctive symbol. but when the symbol is made into a fetish and an instrument of proving the superiority of one's religion over others, it is fit only to be discarded. After long study and experience, I have come to the conclusion that 1. All religions are true. 2. All religions have some error in them. 3. All religions are almost as dear to me as my own Hinduism, in as much as all human beings should be as dear to one as one's own close relatives. My own veneration for other faiths is the same as that for my own faith. Therefore, no thought of conversion is possible. God has created different faiths just as he has the votaries thereof. How can I even secretly harbor the thought that my neighbor's faith is inferior to mine and wish that he should give up his faith and embrace mine? As a true and loyal friend, I can only wish and pray that he may live and grow perfect in his own faith. In God's house, there are many mansions, and they are equally holy. Let no one even for a moment entertain the fear that a reverent study of other religions is likely to weaken or shake one's faith in one's own. The Hindu system of philosophy regards all religions as containing the elements of truth in them and enjoins an attitude of respect and reverence towards them all. This, of course, presupposes regard for one's own religion, 
Study and appreciation of other religions need not cause a weakening of that regard. It should mean extension of that regard to other religions. It is better to allow our lives to speak for us than our words. God did not bear the cross only 1900 years ago, but He bears it today, and He dies and is resurrected from day to day. It would be poor comfort to the world if it had to depend upon a historical God who died 2000 years ago. Do not then preach the God of history, but show Him as He lives today through you. I do not believe in people telling others of their faith, especially with a view to conversion. Faith does not admit of telling. It has to be lived and then it becomes self-propagating. Divine knowledge is not borrowed from books. It has to be realized in oneself. Books are at best an aid, often even a hindrance. I believe in the fundamental truth of all great religions of the world. I believe that they are all God-given, and I believe that they were necessary for the people to whom these religions were revealed. And I believe that if only we could all of us read the scriptures of the different faiths from the standpoint of the followers of those faiths, we should find that they were at the bottom all one and were all helpful to one another. Belief in one God is the cornerstone of all religions, but I do not foresee a time when there would be only one religion on earth in practice. In theory, since there is one God, there can be only one religion. But in practice, no two persons I have known have had the same identical conception of God. Therefore, there will perhaps always be different religions answering to different temperaments and climatic conditions. I believe that all the great religions of the world are true more or less. I say more or less because I believe that everything the human hand touches by reason of the very fact that human beings are imperfect becomes imperfect. Perfection is the exclusive attribute of God and it is indescribable, untranslatable. I do believe that it is possible for every human being to become perfect even as God is perfect. It is necessary for us all to aspire after perfection. But when that blessed state is attained, it becomes indescribable, indefinable. And I, therefore, admit in all humility that even the Vedas, the Quran, and the Bible are imperfect word of God, and imperfect beings that we are, swayed to and fro by a multitude of passions, it is impossible for us even to understand this word of God in its fullness. I do not believe in the exclusive divinity of the Vedas. I believe the Bible the Quran and the Zen Avesta to be as much divinely inspired as the Vedas. My belief in the Hindu scriptures does not require me to accept every word and every verse as divinely inspired. I decline to be bound by any interpretation, however learned it may be, if it is repugnant to reason or moral sense. Temples or mosques or churches, I make no distinction between these different abodes of God. They are what faith has made them. They are an answer to man's craving, somehow to reach the unseen. The prayer has saved my life. Without it, I should have been a lunatic long ago. I had my share of the bitterest public and private experiences. They threw me in temporary despair. If I was able to get rid of that despair, it was because of prayer. It has not been a part of my life as truth has been. It came out of sheer necessity as I found myself in a plight where I could not possibly be happy without it. And as time went on, my faith in God increased and more irresistible became the yearning for prayer. Life seemed to be dull and vacant without it. I had attended the Christian service in South Africa, but it had failed to grip me. I could not join them in it. They supplicated God. I could not. I failed egregiously. I started with disbelief in God and prayer, and until at a late stage in life, I did not feel anything like a void in life. But at that stage, I felt that as food is indispensable for the body, so was prayer indispensable for the soul. In fact, food for the body is not so necessary as prayer for the soul. For starvation is often necessary to keep the body in health, but there is no such thing as prayer starvation. You cannot possibly have a surfeit of prayer. Three of the greatest teachers of the world, Buddha, Jesus, and Muhammad, peace be upon him, 
have left unimpeachable testimony that they found illumination through prayer and could not possibly live without it. Millions of Hindus, Muslims, and Christians find their only solace in life in prayer. Either you call them liars or self-deluded people. I will say that this lying has a charm for me, a truth seeker, if it is lying that has given me that mainstay or staff of life without which I could not live for a moment. In spite of despair staring me in the face on the political horizon, I have never lost my peace. In fact, I have found people who envy my peace. That peace comes from prayer. I am not a man of learning, but I humbly claim to be a man of prayer. I am indifferent as to the form. Everyone is a law unto himself in that respect. But there are some well-marked roads and it is safe to walk along the beaten tracks trodden by the ancient teachers. I have given my personal testimony. Let everyone try and find that as a result of daily prayer, he adds something new to his life. Gentle viewers, we appreciate your company today on Words of Wisdom. Coming up next is a dazzling vegan New Year celebration, part 6 of 8, right after noteworthy news, here on Supreme Master Television. May God's comforting love and light uplift your heart and soul. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash WOW. Nos programmes offrent plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com barre oblique schedule et suprememastertv.com barre oblique WOW. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com barre inclinada schedule et suprememastertv.com barre inclinada WOW. Наши программы предлагают много языков. Пожалуйста, посмотрите suprememastertv.com касачерта schedule и suprememastertv.com касачерта www.